Hey YouTube, I'm going to make a short video on these three uh, Geiger counters, although well, technically this one's not a Geiger counter, but I'll get into that here in a minute. First off though, I'm not an expert with any of this. I'm just an amateur hobbyist and a science nerd, so please forgive me if I say something that's not correct. Let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to change the description. But, um... First off, we're going to talk about these three, and I'm just going to go over some of the differences and some of the similarities. So, first off, I'm going to start with this one. This is the S1 from BetterGeiger.com, and it is not a Geiger counter. It is actually it actually uses a scintillator, a scintillation detector, and what that is is it's a crystal. There's several different types that they'll use that responds by emitting a small light pulse whenever it's hit by radiation. And then there's a photo detector on, as part of that that can measure those light pulses and not only uh, detect them, but actually, based on the intensity of them, I believe, is how it's able to uh, measure the energy. Because different isotopes have different energies. And one of these, like this guy or this guy, they show you a different reading on one isotope or compared to another. So this one takes those different energies into account and is able to give you a more accurate dose rate. You can turn the sound on and hear it quietly clicking. So this one is the Radiation Alert Ranger, and it will measure alpha radiation. So there's three main types of radiation. There's alpha, beta, and gamma. And alpha is actually particles, and they're stopped by a sheet of paper or by your skin or this plastic cover on the back. Beta has a, little, has a little more energy to it. It can go through, you know, it can go through paper and some steel, uh, stuff like that, although usually pretty thick aluminum will stop it. Gamma is the one that will go through steel and concrete and you. So that's the one that most people are going to be worried about. Now, alpha, you don't want to breathe alpha particles in because once they're inside your body, they can wreak havoc on your internal organs, your lungs, and your stuff like that, which aren't protected from them. Or if you swallowed something with alpha in it, yeah, that would not be good. But gamma is the main one that people are going to be concerned about um, after a nuclear accident or something, and that's what this one's measuring, although this one does measure some beta. So, let me turn this one on. So the thing... I'm sorry, I pushed the actual power button. So the thing about this is, you can go into your menu... Wait for it to boot up. And if you know the isotope you're measuring, it gives you a list of some that it's able to calculate a dose rate for. So you've got... <laughs> Excuse me. So you've got like iodine-131, cesium-137, cobalt-60, um, so on and so forth, that you can pick and it will give you a dose rate if you know what you're measuring. But if you're measuring multiple different isotopes or you don't know what you're measuring, you want to be, usually, from what I understand, you want to be reading in counts per minute. And this is just background radiation right now. <laughs> If we go over here, see this one's going to read a little higher because it's got a bigger, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> it's got a bigger probe in it, and this one, but this one will give you a more accurate dose rate. Uh, sorry about that, getting over a bit of a cold and a coughing fit. So... And then this guy here is the GMC 500 Plus, and it's got traditional Geiger tubes in it. It's got a, I think that's the high range tube, the smaller one, and then it's got the low normal range tube. And we'll turn it on. And so here's all three of them. This one mainly measures beta, or it measures, it's good with measuring beta, and it measures some gamma. This one measures all three, but it's really sensitive to alpha when you have the cover off, and we'll do that here in a minute. This one just measures uh, 
Primarily gamma and some beta. No alpha. This is the only one I have that measures alpha. Um, and over here, we have... Over here, we have a little bit of americium-241. Now, this comes out of a smoke alarm. I got this from a science teacher as part of a school project I was doing. I don't recommend you going and out ripping smoke alarms apart for this. Um, if I was going to take it out of the case and handle it, I would probably wear gloves. Is that absolutely necessary? From what I understand, no, but it's a good idea. And we're going to see, as you can see with that open, these really haven't changed a whole lot, but what happens when we bring one over to it? You can see that rate really going up. Now that cover is still on the back, so this is measuring beta and some gamma. Uh, Americium 241 primarily produces alpha, but it also produces beta and some lower energy gamma rays, I believe. So you can see how it's really going up. Up to about 1100, 1200, okay. Okay, now I'm going to pause this and take this cover off. Or actually, I don't think I need to pause it. Carefully remove this. The thing about these is you don't want to poke anything through that screen. I try to avoid even touching the screen because back behind there is the actual detector and it's a really thin piece of mica from what I understand. And if you touch that or mess with it, it will ruin it. So here's with that off. And it's just kind of touching this can. It's not touching the source down in there. See, it's going up. It's exceeding what it was before. It was at like 1,500 before. Well, now it's almost 3,000. It's because it's picking up those alpha particles. So we can take a, a sheet of paper, and like I said, see it was over 3,000 with that. Okay, let's make sure that I'm still right over it. So you can see it's still up there, but it's not nearly as high as it was. It's not even getting close to, it's just now getting close to 2,000, and it was over three, so yeah. So there's that, and if you remember I said this one does not measure alpha at all, it's just mostly beta and some gamma. So. There's the low range tube. We're going to hold the low range tube over that. So it tells you, it's, it's telling you it's radioactive. It's just not as sensitive to it. Now see it's showing one microceiver an hour or 0 0.1, 0 .1, 1 millirem. But, take into account, most of these are calibrated with cesium-137. So, if you were measuring cesium-137, that dose rate would be probably fairly accurate. But, since we're not measuring cesium-137, now watch this. You can hear it screaming away. And it did jump up. But it's still not quite as high as that white one was showing. And it's still showing that as a normal level. <coughs> oh, excuse me. And you see as the further I move away from it, it drops off considerably. You have to have it almost right up to it. So... That also go, takes into account, see with this one, those alphas can't travel very far. They hit the molecules in the air and get blocked. 
It doesn't take much to stop them. There's a... With radiation, you have three things. You have time, distance, and shielding. So, the less time you're exposed to it, the more distance between you and whatever is radioactive, or the more shielding between you and it, all help you achieve a lower dose rate. So, for instance, if you know you ran past something that was highly radioactive as opposed to standing next to it for three hours, you know, you ran past it, you'd get a much lower dose rate than standing there continuously by it. Or if you were further away from it, then, you know, if it was across town versus you standing 10 feet from it. But, um, so yeah, that's how that, how those, those all react to that. See, it's still... But then again, this one doesn't detect alpha, so that's kind of a moot point. But yeah, and then if we add this, if we add just the steel cover back on, you still hear that goes up. And the screen's actually not flickering like that. It's the effect of the camera. Probably the frame rate or something. It's actually kind of high. But, so... Oh, and then this one. I guess we'll do this one too. So that blocks some of it, but if we add this, which there's a piece of lead in there that's why it's wrapped in tape if we add this over it and seal it back up <coughs> oh, excuse me picking some of it up but considerably less see that's also considerably less And you see this one's going back down. For, uh, 0.040 or thereabouts is a pretty average background reading for around here in southwest Missouri. Turn the sound off on that one. But, um, so every time a particle of, or every time a, either a particle or ray, I guess in the instance of gamma, hits this tube, it creates an electrical pulse in there that can be detected. So counts per minute is literally how many times radiation has hit that tube in a minute. So every click is a particle of radiation hitting that. So in a background setting where there's not a lot of radiation, it's pretty low. But in a place where there may be nuclear fallout or a nuclear waste spill or something like that, it's going to be much higher. So these are all good for telling if a place is, you know, contaminated or something, or if, if the environment you're in is unsafe. This one's good because the dose rate, you know, can actually be fairly accurately measured. This was supposedly designed by a guy that's got a uh, nuclear science degree, so it's supposed to be fairly accurate, and it's only like, I think around 150 bucks. Uh, this one's considerably more expensive. It's it's about 600, um, and this one is about the same price as this. It's about 150. But yeah, that's a good, see now it's real low, and that's just radiation. It's really random like that. You can have it go up real high one minute and then be real low the next. So, but yeah, with it shielded like that, it's pretty, pretty safe. And then this goes downstairs in a steel cabinet. So there's even more metal between me and it. And I don't have it out very often. 
Um, really, something like this, as long as you don't carry it with you on a daily basis, uh, you'd be fine. Limited exposure to it. And if you do handle the source, uh, wear gloves, preferably. Or if you don't wear gloves, just wash your hands really thoroughly afterwards. I mean, it is alpha, and if there's a chance that some of that could get on you. But I think that's pretty low from what I've understood. But, you know, a little bit of precaution never hurts. So, that's also why I have it sitting on the paper. So, that's basically that. If there's anything I missed, uh, let me know in the comments. And I'll try to correct it in my description. But, yeah. Thanks for watching.